Well, Swimming Australia are due to release guidelines on disorder, eating disorder prevention and management today. The report is based on two years of research and feedback from athletes. These guidelines are not a knee-jerk reaction with swimmers noting that staff uh, comments had triggered some eating disorders in the past. The governing body hopes a new report will help promote healthy and positive body images. Join me live now is the President of Swimming Australia, Dr Michelle Gallen. Michelle, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Let's go back. What actually triggered the need for these guidelines and this research? Um, Laura, thanks for having me. Um, look, I think this research has been ongoing in one form or another since 2015, and in a way it's a continual improvement curve that we are always um, looking for in swimming, um, obviously with our competition and our performances, but also in creating that really safe environment for everybody to participate in the sport that we love. Um, I think you know, media, there's certainly been no, no lack of stories in the media about and, and awareness of some of the damage that has been done in the past. Usually yeah. ill intent, usually, sorry, not intentional, but um, it's that sort of, um, you're dealing with a very sensitive area when you need to talk to young people around things related to body image um, in a performance context. And so setting some guidelines around that and um, having policies in place and then doing the education so that our entire community can um, take the, these guidelines on board and have really respectful, considered conversations about this sort of stuff is really important. So what are the guidelines, Michelle? Um, so the guidelines are essentially, um, at, at the moment, it's, it's a set of, of principles around when you might have a conversation around um, body image or body composition, as they say, and when it's not appropriate to have those conversations, um, things around steering clear of, you know, children and adolescents. Swimming is for everybody in our country. Mm. Um, and the, the people who need to have conversations about performing with, with the tool that you have that is your body is a fairly small percentage. It's that really high performance sort of um, group. And so it's a set of guidelines around when you get to the point where an athlete is performing at such a level that you need to have conversations around um, body composition or body image, um, strength, those sorts of things, how to have those conversations, how to make sure that the athlete and all of their support team are included in those mm. conversations, um, how to make sure that they're focused on the right thing, which is the performance, yeah. and that they're not taken the, the wrong way, which is um, which can be damaging. Michelle, how much of this is focus on athletes after they stop competing at a high level or post their uh, career? Because obviously that is a huge shift for anyone mentally, but also physically as well. You're no longer um, needing the calories uh, or, or doing that hectic uh, training. So nutrition is very different. What are you doing and what is your responsibility um, after swimmers leave uh, competitive swimming? Um, you raise a really good point. And as an ex-swimmer myself, I've, I've been through that um yeah, yeah recognize the, is it hard the, so as uh, you've been through it so what are you kind absolutely. of dealing with yeah absolutely you're right you're dealing with um it's a whole array of things it's the less need for caloric intake i guess because suddenly you're not doing as much you're not needing to perform at such a high level um Hopefully what we're doing here by setting up the right conversations during an athlete's career is making sure that we see food as its nutrition. And that can then transition into life after sport as well. Is okay, well, my nutritional needs are different here. Um, I can't just eat as much. I don't need as much as I might have needed or I might need different foods than I used to need, um, certainly for women as we go through all stages of our life. That changes pretty frequently. Um, certainly once a swimmer has stopped their competitive career, um, we have an athlete and wellbeing service that um, and, and keeps them our, our highest competitors stay in our Dolphin alumni and we've got a wellbeing service that we continue to provide um, some measure as they transition into their, some measure of support as they mm. transition into their life after the sport. 
Um, Dr Michelle Gallen, one final question here. This is something that has been in the works for quite some time. I think it's, it's landmark. Is it particularly important in swimming or should other sports adopt this as well? Um, I think that it's important across all sports and it's certainly something that the Australian Institute of Sport and our National Institute networks have supported us with and these are people that work across all sports. Um, I guess we see it as very important in swimming because of the nature of our sport. Um, from a young age, you're turning up and you're doing all of your training, all of your competition in a swimsuit um, in front of a lot of people. It has its own set of confrontational um, body image issues. So for us, that's certainly a very important consideration, but it's certainly not unique to swimming. And um, all sports, I think, are certainly looking at this. We've been working with other sports who are also looking at these issues.